Hey everybody, it's Joe from HomestudioCorner.com and uh, this is the first actual video I'm doing from my home studio. So as you can see, I actually do have a home studio and uh, what I'm going to do today is go through some questions that uh, some of my readers submitted via a form on my website which is HomestudioCorner.com and there's an Ask Joe form and uh, I just launched the website last week and I had a number of requests so hopefully we're going to go through some of those Maybe I can answer some questions and um, hopefully be, be of some help. So we're going to dig right in because there's about eight of those here, so we'll get started. And the first one comes from Michael. Michael says, uh, I had a question about the program Vocaline. I think it's what I need for my setup, but I'm short on money. Is there a cheaper version of Vocaline or something similar that would do the same thing? If you're not familiar with it, Vocaline is a program that takes your audio. Let's say you have uh, eight background vocal tracks all singing the same part or similar parts but the timing with each one is a little off. What you want to do is Vocaline is a plug-in that will take those and and align those. So if there's one that comes in a little early, a little late, it automatically aligns all those together which can be nice. Um, to answer your question, it sells for 300 so that's a good chunk of change for a plug-in that does one specific function. But you can do that with most DAWs these days. Pro Tools has a lot of elastic audio functions. Most other programs do as well. And you can just manually go in there and uh, you know, stretch things here, shorten things there, and uh, get pretty much the same results. It'll take longer, but it's cheap, so that might not be a bad option for you. Uh, next question comes from Brady. And uh, he says, I'm wondering what would be a good recording device for my band. Uh, they're only 13, and they want some sort of a good but cheap recorder and they're looking through different catalogs and things and just don't know what's good and what's not. Uh, Brady, what I would do is I would spend two or three hundred dollars on a good handheld recorder, something like the, the Zoom H2, or if you can swing it, the Zoom H4n are great. They have basically, um, the H4n, for example, has two microphones built in on the top, and they do kind of an XY pattern for recording your band. And it has additional mic inputs on the bottom that you can set up microphones to, you know, record additional things at once. And it's pretty easy to use. And then once you have it done, you can um, take those files into your computer, make an MP3, mix them down, whatever you want to do. So that'd be my suggestion. You can certainly go the computer route and things like this with Pro Tools. It's going to be a little bit more in depth. And uh, if you're just starting out, that might be a great way to get your feet wet. Bill wrote, uh, "I'm an older musician and." Um, Right now he has a 2400 uh, Roland VS2400, one of those standalone recorders with some uh, KRK monitors. And he's contemplating moving to the PC route as opposed to a standalone recorder and wants to know what my opinion is of the Emu 1616M PCI. And the Emu is good. It's a little PCI card that you put into your computer. Uh, it has to be a tower computer, obviously. And it has a cable that runs up to a box that sits on your desktop that has a couple of mic inputs and outputs and knobs and things. And the unique thing about that is that it allows you to do some some different processing on the box itself. So instead of your computer running an EQ or a compressor, you can send that out to the box and have it run that. So it's pretty cool. Um, sells for about 500. Not a bad not a bad option. Uh, Chase from the Philippines uh, is getting ready to move into a new house, and he's starting completely from scratch. And he wants a dubbing room and a control room that are pretty you know dead as far as the acoustic treatment but he wants a live room for drums and um, he's basically asking how to treat the live room so there's sufficient natural reverb but that it's also not too live and just sounds kinda of bad you know when the sounds bouncing around the room uh, I dealt with this in an article recently about acoustic treatment and uh, that might be good to read but uh, for me I think you want to put some acoustic foam up uh, you may be able to see I've got some here behind my monitors. I've got some over here on the back wall as well. Just putting that throughout the room is going to deaden the room a little bit and allow the sound to still bounce around some. And uh, another thing is some diffusers would be good. And those are just, they're usually wooden or plastic. And they'll take the sound and as the sound comes in and hits the diffuser, instead of just bouncing straight back, it'll spread the sound out. So the room still has a nice reverb, kind of live sound, but it doesn't... Um, the sounds don't bounce back right back and forth and get standing waves and all of that kind of nasty sound. So hopefully that will give you some ideas. Uh, feel free to ask more questions too, Chase. There's a, there's a lot we can talk about about that. Uh, John is asking about the, um, the, U the Tascam US-122. 
he's using that with Cubase and it works fine, but it only has two mic inputs. And he says, I want to upgrade to eight mic inputs. And he's asking about the M Audio Fast Track Ultra 8R, which is a USB 2.0 interface. Uh, first of all, wants to know if it works with Cubase. Yes, it does. And also wants to know which is best, USB or Firewire. And uh, really, I prefer Firewire, but spec-wise, they pretty much spec out the same. The big thing I like about Firewire is that you can daisy chain multiple devices. Uh, just over here, I've got the 003 running into one hard drive, and then another hard drive, and then another hard drive. So that's kind of nice with Firewire. That all goes into one port on my laptop and makes it pretty easy. Um, he's also asking, he has a, a Yamaha standalone recorder, wants to know what's best for um, for getting what he wants. He can get eight mic inputs into the recorder. Should he do that and then bring those into Cubase and mix those later? And I would say you can do that, but for me personally, I like to do everything in one program and one system and having to fly things back and forth, it can get old quick and kind of stifle uh, the whole creative process. So I'd rather, I would say, you know, drop a few bucks on that interface and get that and just be all in Cubase. And maybe you can eBay that Yamaha and get some money for that as well or use it for some other purpose. And uh, that's from John in San Francisco. All right, Ben wrote, and this is uh, Ben Meredith, a friend of mine. Uh, he's getting into video editing and a lot of times wants to maybe add a simple guitar track on top of his uh, the videos that he's p producing and uh, doesn't want anything serious but needs some way to record a few things and he's got he's got a Mac and GarageBand just needs a microphone not sure what to do what I would do um, you can go the USB microphone route I wouldn't do that they just don't sound that good um, but they're simple so that might be a good option otherwise a little USB audio interface something like the PreSonus audio box it's about hundred fifty dollars has two mic inputs that would work great and then if you can swing it, I love Rode microphones, that's R-O-D-E, and their NT1A is a cool mic. It's about $230, it's a little more than some of the cheaper mics, but it's not a whole lot of money, it sounds amazing. So uh, that would be my choice, um, you can go with that. There's a few cheaper mics, Audio-Technica has an AT2020, that's not bad, that might be worth looking at as well. So, hope that helps. Bruce writes, uh, hey Joe, I had a PC that failed on me with Reaper, and now he's thinking about getting into Pro Tools. Uh, his one concern is that back when he used Pro Tools 6.9 there was no direct monitoring off the interfaces and he doesn't want to use a hardware mixer and so he's basically saying many interfaces have a zero latency switch but from what I understand Digi's don't. How do you monitor with zero or low latency? Uh, this is really my determining factor for Pro Tools or not. Um, well, Bruce, Pro Tools does have low latency monitoring. If you get an inbox, there's a mix knob on there that allows you to hear what you're recording along with the tracks that play back. Uh, and in a bigger system like a 003, there's actually a menu option inside of Pro Tools that lets you um, select low latency monitoring. And it works pretty well. Combine that with a low buffer setting and you're good. Um, for those of you that aren't quite sure what I'm talking about, latency is basically when I play the guitar and it goes through the computer, it sometimes has a delay when it comes back and that's not really conducive to recording. Uh, so those are different ways that the uh, manufacturers handle that situation when you're using USB or Firewire. All right, and the last question is from Albert. Uh, he read my article about uh, using a dedicated hard drive and wants to know basically if you have a big sample library of virtual instruments, those usually come with a ton of samples. He wants to know should you put all that on the same drive you're recording to or should you maybe put that into a second or third drive? And ideally, uh, what I would say, Albert, is that you want to go, if you can, have a dedicated recording drive and then have a, another drive for your samples and another drive for backup. That's actually what I have here. If you can't, it's fine to have them all on the same drive. It's just, if you have a lot of virtual instruments and a lot of tracks, it's going to get bogged down and you'll get some log jam there as the drive just tries to play back everything. So that'd be my recommendation, but it'll work either way. And just like it will work to use your internal drive, but not a good idea. So. Well, that's it for questions. Um, if you have any f further questions or want to make any comments, please head back over to my website. It's www.homestudiocorner.com and leave a comment there. And if you have a question you want me to deal with in a future video, there's a form there called Ask Joe. Fill that out and uh, we'll see if we can't get that taken care of here shortly. Okay, thanks for visiting.